Let's welcome uh, Courtney and, and George, and they're going to discuss the open source mapping library shootout. Thank you. All right. On. All right. Okay. Mic test. Good? Yeah, okay, I hear the echo now. Awesome, thank you guys so much for coming today. Um, so we've assembled a lineup of uh, four different open source uh, web mapping libraries that we're gonna walk through and we're gonna compare various scenarios. Um, so we're gonna dive right in. This is a shootout after all. We're actually gonna go probably pretty fast because there's a lot of content that we're gonna try to cover here. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start um, by giving a high-level comparison of these libraries, revealing some of like the strengths and weaknesses and unique features. Then we're gonna dive into per the performance comparisons and covering how these libraries perform. Uh, and we'll explore like load times for various metrics, giving you a clearer picture of which library shines best in specific use cases. Uh, and then finally, we'll finish up with some conclusions. All right, so before we get into that, we're gonna introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Courtney Otto, and I'm a developer advocate at Esri. Uh, I've been with Esri for a little over a year now. Uh, and before that, I actually was a high school math and computer science teacher, so I was a career switcher. I did that for 10 years, uh, and now I'm more in the computer science developer space, so web development. Um, yeah, that's about it for me. And George, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. So my name is George. I'm a product engineer at Esri, uh, working alongside Courtney on her team. And I've been at Esri for about the same time, about a year. And before that, I was actually a university student, so just kind of like first job out of college. Um, yeah, I write documentation and maintain uh, basically demo apps and code for Esri's products. So. Yeah, really excited to be here talking about open source today because that's my main area of focus, documenting Leaflet, MapLibre, CZM, and, and open layers. All right, so before we jump in, a question you guys might be asking right now is why should I care about this topic and, and web mapping and performance in general? I think it's clear to everyone that web mapping is super important as an industry and it's only getting more popular. And all of the libraries that we're showcasing today are open source and free. So obviously there's a lot of other alternatives like, like our own Esri products and Mapbox GLJS and the Google Maps SDK. But every, everything we're showing today is like a viable, free and open source alternative. So I think it's important to have like a comprehensive understanding of all the different options available. And honestly, the best, the best library varies off your use case. So just kind of knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each is really our goal for, uh, for today. So yeah. was, it's not like you can say there's a one, like yeah. number one winner overall. I mean, it really is a use case thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just keep in mind like your own, your own projects as you're going through this and see what works best for you. Um, another question you might be asking is why does Esri care about this? And, and why are we up here talking about it as two <laughs> Esri developers? Why are we here? <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, well, it's kind of all part of Esri's open vision, which is a larger plan um, announced by Jack recently to try and support open source as much as possible in every way. Esri does support open standards. Esri uses open source internally. Esri supports open source products and, and open data through things like ArcGIS Hub. Obviously, we maintain like the I3S standard and other standards such as that. And um, what you might not know is that we also support integrations, pretty tight integrations with open source JavaScript libraries. Um, so all of the libraries we're talking about today, Leaflet, MapLibre, Cesium, and OpenLayers, we have good integrations for Esri's and ArcGIS like hosted data and services. Um, we're actually gonna be using Esri data in this talk as kind of a benchmark for performance. So, yeah, what I do at Esri is actually support that. Um, this is just a screenshot of the website developers.arcgis.com, where we have detailed integration guides for each of the libraries we're going through. So, you see that big picture is a picture of our CZM.js guide that launched this year. And we have chapters and tons of tutorials on how to use CZM.js and how to integrate with stuff like geocoding, routing, data services. And we have this for every, every library. We also maintain our own open source libraries internally, well, actually just publicly. Uh, we have Esri Leaflet for Leaflet specific integrations and that has a bunch of children like Esri Leaflet Vector. And we also support ArcGIS REST.js, which is an open source wrapper around our REST API. All right. Yeah, and one other thing I'll add to that too um, is this month is October, and we just joined Hacktoberfest this year. So um, it is the like a month long celebration of open source. Uh, 
it, we have like, I think six different GitHub repos that we are, yeah, having open to that this month. Um, I know it's almost the end of October, but there's still time. So uh, things like Esri Leaf, like uh, Coop, which uh, Andrew Turner gave a talk about earlier, um, and a few other things too. So yeah, um, we have more information uh, that I'll give about that later. Cool. Okay, let's get into the library comparisons. So I'm gonna go through um, Leaflet, along with Esri Leaflet, uh, Map Libre, GeoJS, Open Layers, and CZMJS, we're gonna do dimensional map support, uh, comparisons, data support types, data styling, library file sizes, and community involvement. Okay, so before I get into that, um, I can't see very well, but <laughs> show of hands, uh, how many have ever used Leaflet before? Awesome, yeah, wow. lots of us, cool. <laughs> All right, uh, Map Libre, GeoJS. Okay, cool, awesome. Um, open Layers. Oh, more nice. open layers, yeah, okay, cool. And CZMJS, nice, okay, cool. So we have pretty a good. good variety, yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Okay, sweet. So, um, looking at the maps and scene support here, so all of these four libraries obviously support 2D maps, uh, and what I, what I do have here is a GIF of um, 2.5D maps, uh, styling. So if you're not familiar with that, it really, it represents, it's a way to represent 3D buildings and terrain in a way that provides a sense of depth um, and elevation while primarily still being a 2D uh, representation. So 2.5D is supported with MapLibra and CZMJS along with 3D as well. Okay. All right, now on to data and layer support. Uh, so the first column there is WebGL. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with WebGL, Web Graphics uh, Library, developers can harness the power of modern GPUs to create hardware accelerated graphics and visualizations directly in web pages without any extra plugins or uh, 3D party software. And this really does make the applications more performant. So we've got uh, MapLibra and CZM fully supporting that with open layers partially. Uh, all of them support GeoJSON features. Uh, ArcGIS data services uh, is supported partially through Leaflet with Esri Leaflet, and then the, all the other libraries are with our um, ArcGIS RESTJS library. Uh, vector tiles, we've got, let's see, partial support uh, with a plugin for Leaflet, uh, and then MapLibra and OpenLayers do support it. And then, finally, we've got Cesium, um, well, all support raster tiles, I skipped that one. Uh, but then we've got CZM, which I3S uh, is, what, is what they support. And it's a data format and specification for storing and serving 3D geospatial data. And here's the OGC standard as well. Okay, so now we're on to styling data. And that pretty image in the corner there is a app that George recently told me about that he made, so he's proud of that. Um, I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, so we've got vector tiles, so open layers and leaflet do have partial support for MapLibra GeoJS with the MapLibra GeoJS specification. And then the fullest and strongest support is with MapLibra GeoJS, and that is what that image uh, is. So do you have anything to add to that? No, that, that makes cool. sense. Cool, yeah, awesome, great. So um, on to the next thing, we've got raster, uh, open layers, raster style support for a long time, um, and then you see there that MapLibra and CZM do have partial support. Okay, all right, so now we're gonna go on to library file sizes. Uh, I'm, there's a lot of data, or a lot of numbers in there, I'm not gonna go through all of it, but basically the gist of this is leaflet is the smallest, it's the lightest weight. Um, all, all the others there are kind of, well, you know, MapLibra and Open Layers, they are equivalent. And then we've got, of course, CZM is going to be larger, um, but that being a 3D library, so cool. All right. Okay, um, last slide here before we go on to performance. We've got community involvement. So Leaflet is the most active, um, but really all of them are very active, if you could see there. Um, the Basically, if you have any questions, you can go on to say like Stack Overflow, or, you know, or whatever, wherever uh, GitHub, the, the community spaces, and you should be able to get your questions answered. Awesome. All right, so time for performance. Awesome. Here you go. Thanks, Bernie. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next phase of this talk is all about web performance, um, and 
it's a really important subject, uh, and especially when we're talking about pretty high, like pretty heavy content in a web app, its performances should be like a number one priority for any app that you're loading over the internet. So I'm going to take you through our performance analysis and show you the results. It's kind of a result of our homebrew testing uh, through a research project that Courtney and I have been working on. So let's start off by just defining our goals and kind of what we're looking at here, because performance could really mean a lot of different things. So our overall goal is to compare uh, similar 2D mapping libraries. So we're just going to look at open layers, map library, and leaflet in this example. Cesium has such different use cases, and it has very different performance times. So it's yeah, it just doesn't make sense to compare them together. Um, but for each library, or well, overall, we're trying to answer a few different questions. Uh, we we want to see how long it actually takes to load the libraries. And we're just looking at CDN imports here, not uh, NPM. Uh, we also want to check out how base maps load in each of them, and that, that's going to include raster and vector tile base maps. And then we're going to look at a few common data types just for standard, standard data, like GeoJSON, vector tile, map tile, raster tile, all of that. So the methodology that we used uh, to perform these tests, um, it's a, we ended up using uh, just a Node.js script, basically, to automate the testing. And we're using Puppeteer.js, which is an open source library uh, in JavaScript, to trace the page loading. So we're basically automating, requesting a page, loading it, and then outputting a trace that we then scrape all the events from to kind of check out when, when all the important stuff is happening. We're also using, a li we're also using Lighthouse, which is um, supported by Chrome. And that generate Lighthouse reports include a bunch of important performance metrics. Uh, in, this, in this research project, we were just looking at total blocking time for that, which we'll talk about more in a bit. And here on the slide, you can also see a list of all of the data types that we're going to be looking at. There's five different, five different types we'll go through. There's vector tile base maps, map tile, which is also known as raster tile base maps, then vector tile, map tile, and GeoJSON data. Um, before we jump into all the data types, though, let's take a look at library load times first. Oh, actually, let's take a look at more methodology. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I, Can I tell them what you yeah, used so, to do this? So obviously, these were not rigorous tests in a lab. This was stuff that was performed on my laptop with my scripts. And I did my best to make it a controlled environment. You can see kind of my laptop specs there with RAM and VRAM, if that matters to you. Um, and we're just performing tests one at a time synchronously. We want to make sure that we give as much processing power to the computer as it needs for each one. Um, and obviously, it's not a perfect condition. I still had like antivirus software and stuff running that might have taken up some CPU. But yeah, and just a disclaimer before you jump in, we're not SMEs in this performance subject. Um, so you know, this is just us being interested in the topic and wanting to learn more about it like y'all. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we also did 20 iterations of each test. So mm -hmm. we're just taking the averages and we're kind of reporting that there, trying to kind of normalize the data. Yeah. All right, now let's jump into library load times. So we're showing two graphs here, but let's look at the one on the left first. These charts measure the total amount of time in milliseconds that it takes to request and fully load all of the relevant libraries uh, for Leaflet, Map Library, and Open Layers. So this is the duration between the first request being sent and the final request being received and loaded. And we're including both CSS and JavaScript in whatever order they're requested. The, library, the chart on the left is just base CSS and JavaScript for each library. And in that condition, you can see Leaflet is the fastest by I think it has about 110 milliseconds total, including like all the waiting for response, et cetera, from the server. Makes sense. It's the smallest library. It is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and however, Leaflet doesn't support vector tiles natively. So for some of these tests, we use an additional library called Esri Leaflet Vector, which adds support. So when we add Esri Leaflet Vector, and we're also adding a library called Open Layers Mapbox Style, or OLMS, to Open Layers, you can see in the graph on the right, that's the load times for all of the plugins, which is significantly different. Leaflet actually becomes the longest load time, but it's only about a 50 millisecond difference. And unfortunately, it is required to load vector tiles in Leaflet. You need some sort of additional plugin. Yeah. All right. So moving on, let's talk about some terminology before we jump into the the real data data charts. So we're looking at a couple different uh, browser events when we're tracking performance with Puppeteer. Uh, we mostly care about paint events because that is the main bottleneck for drawing maps, is how long it takes to paint. So a paint event is tracking when pixels are rendered to your display. It's basically sending a command to your GPU to draw something. And there's a couple paint events that we care about 
a lot. There's the first contentful pane or FCP and the, final, uh, the largest contentful pane or LCP. So FCP is when, when a, like the first data that a user can see on their screen. So for a lot of these, a lot of mapping libraries render like the zoom in and zoom out buttons first onto the screen. So that is often when the first contentful pane is for these. And largest contentful pane is when there's the largest visual update that updates the largest portion of the screen. And usually that's when the bulk of the data gets rendered. So in our upcoming slides, we're gonna be looking at FCP and LCP. We're also gonna be looking at total amount of time it takes to paint. And that's from first contentful paint to when the app is fully loaded and done painting. Um, and we're also gonna be looking at total app load time which is just how long it take, the whole thing takes in total. Um, the final stat we're looking at that we need a definition for is total blocking time, or TBT. And this is a really important web metric as well. Uh, this measures the duration where, the, the duration of time during which content is visible on the screen, but a user cannot click on it or, or interact with it, which is like so annoying when you see a button <laughs> and you can't click it. So total blocking time, it's really important to reduce this as low as possible because it's just good UX. If, if you're rendering anything to the screen, it should be, it should do what it says it's gonna do, you know? It should be interactive. What's a good total blocking time? That's a good question, yeah. Anything under 200 milliseconds is deemed like acceptable and good. Obviously, the lower the better. And greater than 200 is okay, but if it gets to like 600 milliseconds or greater than that, that's when it becomes, that's when you should maybe look for a different solution. So yeah, keep that in mind because some of these do take a while. Um, and some of them are really fast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some data in each of the libraries. We're gonna start by looking at vector tile base maps. So this is um, a base map of the world rendered from Esri's vector tile style service. Wait, Esri's base map style service hey. that does vector tiles and image tiles actually. Um, and we're looking at the ArcGIS light gray base map. So we're just requesting this from an API, getting the same data rendered uh, as mapbox style JSON in all of them and just loading it in each library. Um, I'm actually curious, what do you guys think, who do you think is gonna win out of the three um, and be the most performant? Is this like a shout out a or shout something? Out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, well. Leaflet. Leaflet? Okay, okay. <laughs> well, let's, right. let's, let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> All right, so here are the results. The graph on the left has the most data and that blue bar shows the total amount of time it takes to load. Um, I can't see very well either here, um, but yeah, it looks like Leaflet's actually the slowest, unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. And, Ma and MapLibre uh, is the fastest, and I believe it paints everything to the screen in under a second. That's MapLibre, um, which is pretty good. Um, I'd say overall, though, there's no like significant outliers here. They're all kind of comparable in like one to two seconds. Yeah. Um, and the same is true for total blocking time, which is the graph on the right. Um, it's very similar, and all of them are hovering around 200 milliseconds, which is not ideal, but it's still in that range I would deem acceptable. So, yeah, I think MapLibre is going to take this one. Yeah. Yep. All right, so moving on, we've got to go fast through all these tests. Um, map tiles are next, so this is a raster tile, satellite imagery. We're going to do the same thing. We load it in all three. Which one wins? Let's find out. It's actually even closer here. Um, notably, all of the times for vector tile base maps were between one and two seconds, but everything here is a second or less. So it's about twice as fast to load a, a, a raster tile than it is to load vector. Um, but all of them are, are pretty performant. And actually Leaflet, I believe, is gonna take this one. Mm -hmm. And the final note about this uh, before we speed through is that the total blocking time is zero for everyone, which is really good. And that means as soon as you can see the map, you can click and drag and, and zoom and do all those great things. Nice. All right. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is just a standard vector tile data set. So this was, I believe, created from a hosted feature layer in ArcGIS, um, but it is rendered as vector tile, um, and it's a, it, it's a map of land parcels in Malibu and Santa Monica. I think there's like 200,000 unique parcels in here, so good candidate for vector tile rendering. Let's see who wins. Okay, this one is, is pretty interesting. You can see MapLibre wins, um, and it's significantly faster than the slowest one, which is OpenLayers. Um, OpenLayers actually takes almost seven seconds to render this data, which is, it, it's a pretty long time. <laughs> and, and if you try to style it and kind of apply data-driven styling, it takes much longer than that too, um, unfortunately. And that's also reflected in the total blocking time. So open layers, it's just over 600 milliseconds, uh, which is you know that range where you, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. Um, MapLibre has a blocking time of, I think, like 0.4 milliseconds, which is great. 
Um, and it just shows that MapReaver is really built with that in mind and optimized using WebGL uh, for vector tile. Nice. All right, um, moving on, map the gray ones. Mm -hmm. So next is map tile. So it's, we're gonna look at the exact same data, but just convert it to image tiles. Um, this could be a more performant way to render the same data, but you lose out on all that good stuff from vector tile format. You can see though, it's much more comparable and the load times are much smaller. Um, everyone's just under two seconds, which is way better than over seven for open layers. So maybe you, if you need to use open layers, you should render your data as a raster rather than a vector tile. All right, um, moving on. These are all pretty similar, but map three bay is still the fastest. Um, that total blocking time is one millisecond, by the way, for map three bay, and all the rest are zero. But I mean, who cares one, one millisecond? <laughs> That's basically nothing, yeah. All right, so our final, our final data rendering is GeoJSON data, and this is a really common format, um, obviously. We're just looking at a worldwide points layer with about 1,700 points being drawn onto the screen in our, in our test. So how fast do each of them draw these points? Let's see. Looks like open layers actually takes this one, um, and it, it does so pretty well. It has the lowest paint time of all of them, as well as the lowest like overall time. Leaflet actually takes the longest, and it's because Leaflet draws SVGs, SVG markers by default, so I bet if you made those circle markers, it would be a lot faster, actually. Yeah. Um, but you can also see the, the total blocking time for Leaflet is, mu is pretty high. It's actually over 600 milliseconds, which is, once again, not, not good. So I would say maybe loading large amounts of GeoJSON is probably best in open layers. All right, I know we had to speed through all that because of time limitations, yep. but I hope that was a helpful <laughs> section on performance. I'm gonna yeah, pass hopefully. off to Courtney. Yeah, so just some conclusions, some pros and cons of uh, you know, what we just went through. So again, it really does depend on your use, your use case. So. Um, starting with open layers, uh, the pros, we've got, it, it is the best library for GIS operations. Um, it does have the longest lifespan existence. So again, that very active community, it's it, not quite as active, I guess, as Leafa, but still it's existed for a long time. So lo lots of good stuff there. Uh, Performance wise, uh, like George just said, uh, GeoJSON is uh, definitely its pro in that area. So um, some cons, we've got limited WebGL support, um, definitely the worst for vector tile data. Um, and then it is actually a steep learning curve, you know, if you're coming in and you know, not, not familiar with, say, if you're starting out on all of them, this would probably be the steepest. All right, leaflet. So, um, small library size. Uh, Esri Leaflet built in integration with ArcGIS hosted data. Again, very active community, the plugins, all that good stuff. Um, and it's kind of just middle of the pack for performance um, wise, as you saw. And the con really is no WebGL support. All right, Map Libre GeoJS. So we do have WebGL support here, uh, customizing vector tile layers uh, and performance. Honestly, this is probably the one that we would say wins all around if we had to kind of pick one. All right, cons, um, smaller community, but that really is just partly due to the fact that it's newest and limited plugins. All right, and I know we didn't do the performance stuff with Cesium, but we still talked about it um, with some of the other stuff. So mentioned some of the pros of Cesium JS, so obviously 3D scene support, advanced 3D modeling, time dynamic visualization. It's, it's the library you'd want to use for more advanced applications and specific use cases. Uh, and cons, large library size, um, but I mean, I think it, it's worth it for the type of applications you can build. Uh, little GPU intensive and no vector tile layer support. All right, so wrapping it up, we do have some resources here. Uh, we will have the GitHub repo um, slides and code, which I'm just now realizing we don't actually have the um, web address there. So, okay, well, if you would like to have access to the slides and code, we can give you the, uh, that link uh, afterwards. Yeah, the performance script we used for all the performance testing and all of our slides here are fully open source and GitHub. So we yeah. can send you guys the link if you're interested. Exactly. Totally try to replicate these tests at home because it should just be like plug and play for some of these tests. Oh yeah, um, for sure. It It's easy to just run, right? You just, mm -hmm. yeah. Really yeah. just clone it and go. Um, yeah, so some other resources there. My um, my colleagues and I, we've, ever since I've joined uh, Esri, we've been really trying to do more like live streams and things on YouTube and other fun stuff. 
So I try to be more, you know, social and active online. So, all right. Um, questions?